please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge, Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thanks for coming, everybody. Uh, roll call. I guess I'll do roll call since Cindy's not here. Uh, let's see. Mark. Here. Joanne. Here. Cindy Valentine. Absent excuse. Artie Bryson. Here. Chrissy. Here. Um, Chris. Here. Uh, Sandy. Absent excuse. <clears throat> okay, moving right along. Uh, bills payable. I will entertain a motion. Board, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the bills payable in the amount of $138,853.99. Support. Okay, a motion and support. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote, and I guess I'm, I'm the guy today. <laughs> I should have brought a glass of water here. Uh, Chris O'Regan. Yes. Christy Hilton. Yes. Artie Bryson, yes. Joanne Shirky. Yes. And Mark Burchard. Yes. Okay, motion passes. And next is the supervisor's report. And as I've always been for the past year and a half, I start out with high water report. <clears throat> Current status is, you know, the, the water levels have been holding uh, pretty much flat the past three, four weeks uh, at, at 577 feet above sea level. Um, wish it would start dry, dropping down a little bit, but uh, it hasn't happened yet. But and the good news, our precipitation for uh, December so far has been lower than normal. Um, and we do have, and I'll talk more about this later, um, Wednesday, uh, in two days, we're sponsoring a, a high water and a slash ferry meeting. Uh, we have uh, Dan Lowers, Justin Westmiller, and a few other people, um, Army Corps of Engineers. I'm not sure if the DNR uh, confirmed yet or not, and a, a couple other entities are still questionable if they're gonna make it or not. But that's gonna be Wednesday at 10 o'clock. Um, try to get it at different times, later times, but that's really the only time that these people from Lansing and Detroit are really available. Um, you know, I, I, we, we got together to put this together oh, about 10, 11 days ago. And um, it takes that long to get everyone mustered to, to, to do that. Um, to, for, for a meeting like this. So, um, Artie, is that meeting gonna be held right here in the Township? Yes, right here, and, and we are gonna video it, so I'll, I'll put it on YouTube also. Thank you. And um, also, as far as um, the high water, I'm asked, I've, I've contacted the um, subcommittee, the state legislature, the subcommittee for the DNR. I asked them to be on their uh, next meeting at the, their subcommittee meets in January. Um, Why well, I talk to them about a couple different things. Uh, first, last year, as you, everyone might know, the board knows, you know, I tried to get a temporary no wake restriction in the channels of the St. Clair River. And we failed to do that. Uh, the only way we can do that is through the governor's office, <clears throat> as how I'm told. And the governor would not do that unless we declared a state of emergency and it was approved. Well, August 12th, we did send her a letter to, you know, to be, a, you know, requesting a state of emergency, and that would have made uh, other resources available to us, and it would have gave us an avenue that she may have uh, uh, granted us a temporary no wake in the in the channels here. Well, that didn't happen. I think uh, end of October, we finally got a response from the governor's office and it was denied. And uh, so the DNR does not have the authority, the power to make a temporary water control. Uh, it has to be permanent. I don't want myself a permanent no wake in our rivers. I mean, we're all boaters and, and our economy kind of depends on it when times are good and we, our water levels are normal. And um, so they, um, I, I'm going to the subcommittee to ask that they consider some legislation about making some type of a temporary or emergency 
authority for the DNR with checks and balances. Every authority needs checks and balances. Uh, and I, I, I have a kind of framework in my own mind how to do that, but you know, it's their job to, to actually put this in place. And um, hopefully uh, we can get some legislation in place where the DNR would be able to do a temporary no wake. And I think that they would have to, they should do it where, you know, it, it would have to be renewed every two weeks or a month or so, and, and it, when the wire does go down, we can lift it. Uh, and I also think the, the temporary no wake should uh, reflect 26 foot boats and larger. Uh, I don't think we'd have to really control a 14 foot fishing boat. Um, at the same token too, I'm also gonna pose the question because it was a huge problem last year when we had high water. You know, and I, I told everybody, you know, you gotta protect your own property. It's, it's important to it. We, we were helping as much as we can, providing sandbags and sand and, and everything else that we could, but you gotta protect your own property. And uh, the problem is people were protecting their property, um, but over 50% of the property in the Clay Township is owned by the state of Michigan. They didn't spend $1 on flood mitigation. <clears throat> And so I had people that did the right thing on their property, but did, living next to state property, they did, the state did nothing, so the water actually traveled over state property and flooded these property owners out. And, uh, you know, they, what can I do? I, you know, and I posed the question to the, to the state back then, and they didn't have any answers for me. I said, well, check into it, and they got back. They never did come up with an answer. So I'm going to pose this question also to the subcommittee of the DNR on, uh, you know, it's an issue. Uh, you got to kind of figure it out because, you know, chances are we're going to have the same issue, hopefully not worse, but very possibly could be worse than last year. Um, and I just want to let the board know too, I've been, I've, I've been asked, um, well, specifically some members from the old club, they wanted us to act and make a permanent no wake in the South Channel by the old club from Gull Island going north a specific time, uh, amount of length. And to do that, we, we could ask the DNR to do that. We'd have to have a couple, um, a couple special uh, or public hearings on it and uh, put the paperwork together to request them to do that. My own personal feeling is we're all in this together and why should, I don't wanna make a, a, a permanent no wake area that will help them, you know, that small section of the river out and leave everyone else to dry, hang out to dry. And I asked, I told the guy, you know, what am I supposed to tell the guy that lives on the North Channel, the Middle Channel, and up further by Sam Soucy? Um, I mean, if, if the board wants me to, I'll go ahead and, and do that. And, and what I was gonna do is just send out a poll email. But uh, my own personal feeling is I would have a hard time doing that when, and, and spending our resources to enforce it there when the rest of the township is, is at need. I think we gotta really concentrate on a temporary no wait. So like I said, I'll, I'll shoot you guys an email and, and if I get a favorable response, well, I'll entertain it and we'll make it an agenda item, but. Um, all right, um, moving on, we, we had our two um, ALS training sessions this past week. A lot of the board members were on it and a lot of the township for uh, active shooting training. That was pretty cool. And I think we're gonna have one more, aren't we, Mike? at some time soon. Um, and hey, we finished our application for the stormwater permit. My least favorite thing to do, I think, well, almost least favorite thing as far as reporting. Um, <clears throat> been talking to OHM, if, if those that don't or uh, didn't know or, or we have our, our large sewer interceptor runs along M M29. There are some issues with it uh, where the, the walls were degraded, we think from uh, 
buildup of gases and uh, it's going to take a lot, uh, a considerable amount of maintenance going forward. We hired a, a engineering uh, firm, OHM, to uh, analyze it and give us a report back. Um, they have a small section still to camera by the wastewater treatment plant. And uh, once that's done, and I think, what are they talking, a day or two they're going to finish that, John? Yeah. Um, we should have the report in our hands end of this year, beginning or early, end of this month or early next, uh, next month with uh, the report. I don't think it's going to be as bad as we initially thought, but we'll wait for the uh, report. <clears throat> on roads, I, I kind of want to bring it to the board attention. Uh, as you all, you, you well know, we got a matching grant to repave uh, Lake Point that uh, was approved. This, uh, this the pavement, the paving will be done this uh, coming year. And I was just looking at uh, shape of Muskrat Run. I think that road's going to need some attention, and it does get a lot of traffic from the high school. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, actually, it's the high school, junior high school now. And uh, I asked for a, um, a quick estimate on what it would cost to piggyback this, that road on this job because they're going to be two blocks away. And uh, they said it was $32,000. So I was going to look at the budget and the numbers, and if it all looks good, you know, I'm going to bring it to the board to approve the piggyback of you know, doing that one block section uh, on the, the job with uh, Lake Point. If we don't, you know, soon, pretty soon Phillips is going to be on, on for uh, repaving. I'm not sure in what order and, and Falkert probably, but I, I would think we'd wait for the construction to be finished on that road and fruit too. But, but um, uh, this isn't, Lake Point isn't quite as big of a job. So, uh, um, yeah, we'll we'll talk about that later if uh, if I can work it out in the budget. <clears throat> and Lake Point's going to include the width expansion yeah. as well, right? Yeah, Lake Point. We're going to do the the old part of Lake Point back. Okay. And uh, between Taft and M29, it's actually going to be wide. That road is actually about three foot too narrow, and we're going to take down a couple trees. Um, the property owner. Is all good with it, but they want to keep the wood. I say well, we can make that happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, um, so yeah, and actually it will go not towards the park, but it will be expanded towards the the homes that two feet. So it won't jeopardize any of the park. park right. The current. And uh, well, that's just the way how the easement works. The ro road commission told me. We do have the funding in place for the Flamingo Bridge. <laughs> Um, you know, th this job will probably be about six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollar job, mm -hmm. and uh, it, this is like similar to the Merrill Street Bridge, which we did what two, three years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, you know that would be fall on the shoulders of the township. You know, bridges are not uh, cheap, and uh, so with the Merrill Street, and that's what I did with this one. I got. Got, went to work and uh, got a federal grant, and then we backed that up with a state grant, and then we also backed that up with a, a county grant. And so uh, the cost of, of this, once it's all, all over and done with, will be about $5,000. Um, so that's a considerable savings of what it could be. It takes about a year, year and a half longer to get the paperwork going. And, actually got knocked back a year because uh, oh a couple, we had some Wayne County had a lot of issues and they got a lot of the federal funding in the one year but we're locked in we can't even start the engineering to January 1st but I'm, I'm told some of it's already done in the can and uh, so that will happen this coming calendar year um, all right is, uh, I don't know if anyone heard, but the mainland ferry dock at uh, the Harsons Island Ferry collapsed. <laughs> I don't know if anyone knows, knows that or not. Uh, collapsed Wednesday. And uh, first of all, I'm gonna say, thank God nobody got hurt. And uh, 
I mean, it could have been a lot, lot worse. And uh, once it happened, we, we, we have been working diligently with a lot of outside um, agencies to bring the closure uh, and bring the, the um, ferry service back as quickly as possible. Um, the ferry not being operational is really unacceptable to me and to the board and the township. And we're going to continue uh, working forward to a, a more permanent resolution. I, I will tell you that during this closure, we did have emergency personnel st stationed on the island, uh, our firefighters, we had ASL crew uh, from uh, Tri Hospital at all times. Uh, and, you know, Tri did a great job uh, uh, getting it staffed and so did Chief Rose. And actually when it happened, um, Sergeant Bill Hubner was uh, command the scene, um, Incident commander? Yeah, yeah, he was in charge of the incident. He did a great job um, managing that, so I want to give kudos to him. The, the first morning of, of the outage, I did arrange for a passenger boat to run between the island and the mainland. A uh, six passenger boat with a U.S. Coast Guard captain uh, on a U.S. Coast Guard certified vessel. Uh, I was lucky. Uh, my brother Bob's boat was available, and uh, then we had I had to uh, get some spring piling dri drove, driven for it. I got a hold of Olson Marine to have that done, and then we made uh, ramps so it's safer to load and unload on both sides. And then I made sure that there was uh, the right kind of insurance in place and got a copy of that. And uh, I'll tell you what, we, we had that passenger boat going by noon the, the very next day. So um, that was one thing what we that we could, did to make things a little better with the situation. Um, so anyhow, this started at noon. The boat actually the, over the weekend it ran between 8 in the morning and 8 at night. Then during the middle of the week, it was going to run like this morning. It started at 5 AM, and it shut down at 6, because that's when the ferry uh, opened up again. Um, as to the, the ferry ramps and who inspects them, uh, it was a good question. I kind of assumed that was MDOT because, you know, it, it's connecting two state highways. And, uh, and that's one of the things, actually, I was, we were on the phone, uh, I think Thursday and Friday, uh, with the State or the county emergency managers, and uh, we found out it's not MDOT, it's not the St. Clair County Road, and uh, there, there's really nobody that really inspects these the ramps. Um, I'm not sure. I, I, I did bring it up to a couple of state legislators. Uh, I think that's some legislation that should be looked at. Um, and I also have a call in to the Army Corps of Engineers to see if they'll take a look at it and at least give us an opinion of, of the condition that, that it's uh, of the ramp. And um, I know they won't give you, actually certify it because they are a permitting agent also, but I asked them to give them an opinion and I haven't heard back because I mean, I know the guy well enough. I, I can't just call up, hey, Pat, you know, I got this going on. You know, can you help us out? And it, it's got to go through a chain of command. So I call our St. Clair County emergency manager, and he return, in turn calls the state emergency manager. Tim, I know all these guys very well. And then they have to call Pat at the Army Corps of Engineers. So it goes up the chain, and it hasn't. I, I don't know where it is. I, it hasn't come that back down to me yet. So that would make me feel a lot better. I'm sure if everybody else, if I at least had the Army Corps of Engineers look at it and say, yeah, you know what, it looks pretty good, um, and so forth and so on. So, <clears throat> and then again, is, is the response of the uh, rate increase. Two days after uh, I was notified of the rate increase, we, uh, I, I 
I had this high water median planned. Uh, so let's morph it into a ferry rate increase information meeting also. So we, we got um, Michigan State Police coming and of course Dan Lowers is gonna be here also. And um, I mean, I'm hoping that the Michigan State Police is gonna explain the process and, uh, of, of getting the rate increase and the appeal process if there is any and just how it works. Because I'm not, this is all new, I'm not even sure exactly how it works. And, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of unanswered questions that need to be answered. And uh, so, I mean, essentially we're bringing Lansing here. Uh, they'll be here in two days for us to answer the questions and, uh, and hopefully get some information. Um, <clears throat> And uh, let's see, what else? I mean, I, I'd like to just say too, on a personal note, I understand everyone's frustration as well as my frustration. I believe me, I had a lot of frustration uh, during this thing too. And, and uh, I apologize, I mean, things weren't handled very smoothly by Champions Auto Fair, to say the least. And, you know, I, the township doesn't have any control of how they handle things. Um, you know, I, and yeah, I don't, it's my brother, but still I, I can't, you know, send him to his room. <laughs> I can only do what you can do. And, uh, believe me, it was, it was tense between, uh, uh, my brother and myself. But, um, I know, uh, as a township, I, I think we did just about everything we could in the short notice, uh, to rectify the situation and make it as, you know, I think that passenger boat was helped out yeah. yep. as much as, as anything. And um, I'm just glad that the, the ferry's back in operation. Right now it's uh, cars and light trucks, and I'll try to get a better explanation on that. Of course, we couldn't get garbage trucks across there today. I, I talked to them, Tara. They're gonna, I tried to get Wednesday, but they're too, they're too backed up. They can't do it Wednesday. They're gonna send a truck over Friday. So if you're on the island, I'll, I put it out on social media. You can put your garbage out on the island uh, Friday and they'll, they'll pick it. And then, then the following week, they'll be there Monday too. So other than that, uh, I usually do a rundown on all our parks and recs programs, but we got a big list of stuff going on that's fun. Uh, if you're on Facebook, go to uh, Clay Township Parks and Rec and like it and all the stuff's there. Or talk to uh, Cindy Valentine, our billing department, or anybody else. Uh, we got flyers and stuff of everything that's going on. So I think that's, uh, that's the end of my supervisor's report right now. And the um, next thing uh, is public comments. Do we have any public comments? Come on up, uh, hit the podium. Jim Newman, 7650 South Channel Drive, and I know it's no surprise to you that I'm here. Um, We're glad to have you, Jim. I'm glad you're glad. Um, Artie, I got a couple quick questions. And you're usually really good about answering questions that people have during these meetings. If I can answer them, right. I will. I want to know how long, how long has it been that you knew about House Bill 4807? I actually found out is the way everybody else did through the press. So Senator Lowers basically changed a major piece of legislation for something that affects the entire community and it was never brought to your attention. Yes. Okay. That's interesting news. Yep. I have a question for you um, uh, regarding the uh, the way the things got to go now going forward. We need somebody to step up to bat for us, for the residents on Harsons Island and Clay Township. Mm -hmm. And there was a meeting last night on the island. And uh, we're not last night. Was it last night? Saturday. Sorry, Saturday. Sunday. 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 It was yesterday. Sorry, I've had a lot, a lot of phone calls and everything going on for the last couple I know days. The feeling. Um, and during that meeting, there were a lot of concerns brought up regarding conflict of interest. 
and the fact that your brother owns that ferry. Mm -hmm. And we're going to expect you to go to war for us. It's fine. You know what? I'm bringing Lansing here. I'm bringing the agency that regulates the ferry here in two days, and I'm bringing the guy who sponsored the bill here in two days. So we can all get information and, answer, and ask questions. Okay, well, the, the, I, I mean, we're bringing Lansing here. Into, right, but we're, we're bringing Lansing here, but we need to know, are you gonna go to the governor's office and see if this can be repealed? I, I, if, if we can, I will. Because right now, this disaster that happened didn't happen because it was just an accident. This accident happened because there's no regulation Okay, there's no inspections, there's no oversight, there's no maintenance, there's no care mm -hmm. given to that property. And it hasn't just happened overnight, and it didn't just happen because of high water. I've been here six years now, and I'm constantly, every time I talk to you, I believe I've said, look, if there's anything I can do to help out the township, mm -hmm. let me know. And right now, we've had people contacting you, and you were saying, look, that's not my business. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, Correct you on that. I stopped giving up updates on when the ferry was going to be fixed because I could not give reliable, accurate information. I never washed my hands from this. I'm bringing in people from Lansing here. I've done quite a bit. I've been on the phone with a bunch of state agencies. I've been I've called the governor's office and talked to her aides and everything else. So, yes, I stopped giving status reports because I could not wash I could not give accurate information. I didn't, you know. Well, I, we're not getting it from champion. Right. We never I, do. I, I understand that. So we need somebody to do it. But you know, this goes on quite a bit beyond that. Um, so don't say I washed my hands from it. Last township meeting, Artie, you said, look, we don't regulate the beer prices at San Susi. We don't regulate the ferry. Both that are tells true. me I don't do it. We, the township does not do it. Why doesn't the township do it? Why well, doesn't the by township? By state statute, we do not regulate the ferry. Do you regulate construction? Uh, we have, by state statute, through building codes, yes. Yes. We don't have, it's all through state statute. But that's been a mess over there for a long time. This was going to happen eventually. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we've got issues that are, you know, very current with what's going on with right. the pricing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are concerned whether or not you're gonna be able to step up to the plate and fight for us, mm -hmm. okay? And then we need somebody to say, okay, we need regulation at this level because it's a very specialized operation there. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything has gotta have some sort of controls. And he's been flying rogue for a long time. And a lot of people have been co complaining about it for a long time. We've been complaining about our cars scraping as we go over the, the ferry. My son lost the exhaust on his car. That costs us money. Mm -hmm. We've got people here today who've lost a lot of revenue because of not being able to get back and forth. And that all goes back to nobody's watching. Nobody seems to care. And it, it seems that nobody cares because the person that should care the most is related to the guy who owns the operation. I mean, I'm saying this because the meeting the other night was hot. Everybody was very, you know, controlled. I think it was it was dead silent in the room when people were talking. Nobody was talking over the other person. But the things that come up constantly are, we've got a guy running a ferry who doesn't care. He's just throwing that money in his pockets. He's not putting it back into fixing anything. Heck, I think one time in six years that I've been out there, I saw him rolling paint on the boat. And that's about it. We've had the boats break down, lose steerage, lose rudder, and now they're saying we lost power and smashed into the dock. When's it gonna end? We need somebody in this community to have some sort of oversight over that. We can't just keep saying, well, it's the state police. What qualifies them to do it? They had some guy come out in September, walk past the docks and say, well, it looks like everything's going good. And then he gets some information saying, well, these are the prices everybody else is charging, and we're allowed to ask you for the same thing, and you must approve those prices. The price for the 20 book ticket, uh, 20 tickets uh, book isn't nearly the same, but he got approved for that, and the state police said, well, we had to approve it. We just pro approved it on the information we got. I said, didn't you do any research? Didn't you guys do the comparisons? They said, no. 
So we've got a big problem here, and it needs to be solved quickly. We need your help. We need everybody here to help us. Hopefully we'll get to that on Wednesday. Okay, and then you made a comment on the radio that, that just a little while ago that said, we're going to look into this. Who's we? Who's we? I don't know the context. Well, I guess it was, had to do with the ferry incident. Yeah, I, I don't know. I've done several interviews. I don't know. All right. Fair enough. One other question. If a guy like Manny Maroon had the one way to get to that island, do you think this township would have some oversight on that? Uh, what, if there was a bridge? Yeah, if there's a bridge. No, the township does not have oversight over bridges. You wouldn't want to have some sort of oversight or some sort of controls. I actually, when, when the, that came up, uh, I think it was 2014, um, by state statute again, township doesn't have any oversight over bridges. The Harsons Island Transportation Authority could. Okay, where, and I, why is I, that? I, I go, well, let me now. finish. And I asked them to get involved, and they declined. Is that it, true? It went mute. It, it was mute. I sent them letters to, to get involved, and I never got a reply. Who did you send the letters to? To the, uh, so, the Haida board. I, can't, I think it was Dave Martin at the time. I can't recall. How oh, the, the Transportation Authority works, it's made up of five people. Two people are appointed by the Township Supervisor, approved by this board. Two people are appointed by the Harsons Island St. Clair Flats Association, then it's approved by this board. And there's a fifth member at large that first is appointed by the Harsons Island Homeowners Association, then it's got to be approved by me, and then it co goes to our board for approval. The two members that are on it that I know of right now are my choices that I, I, I put on there and this board approved. And I don't know if there's, a, I think those are the only two people that are, that are still left that are on it. So I don't have the power to even appoint anybody right now. Who are those two people that are Paula Van Tassel and Mitch Fannin. Well, I think there's other people that have some questions. Uh, I would appreciate maybe an opportunity to sit down with you yeah, sometime yeah. in the next couple of days and talk about the rest of my list because it goes on forever. All right, let's try to do it before Wednesday. It sounds good. All right, thank you. Thanks, Jim. Any other? Yep. Please. <clears throat> they need your name and address. Hi, I'm Patricia Doherty, 127 Mackinac, Harsons Island. Um, I've been on the island for four years, but up here my entire life, and so just here now, permanent resident since August. So one of the, the, the concerns that I had when this all started was the one place to go to get information. Mm -hmm. um, I am part of WINS. I was getting the marine updates, but I was not getting the ferry updates. So I called on Thursday morning. They told me that Clay Township was using an old dispatch feed and they would get a hold of you and let them know that. Everything went fine until Saturday, Monday. Today, when, it's, when I was supposed to get the winds update that said that the ferry was back up and running, I didn't get it. Called back up to winds, talked to Russ again. He said, same thing. Clay Township was using an old feed. He's gonna you know come down. He, you might want to talk to Ross up in Justin Westmiller's office. Talk to him twice. Talk to him Thursday. Talk to him today. He's going to come down and train you guys for us. Don't look at me. I'm just telling you what he okay, told no, me. No, I understand I'm, I'm not getting the updates. My, 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 if I look at what I've requested, it says I should get ferry, but he's telling me Clay Township is not using the right updates. You're the first person I've heard that. Well, I'm the only one that's been calling up there and telling him, okay. too. I, I, no, I, I don't doubt that. I just, I know nobody has relayed that to us. He did contact someone here 
is what he told me. He did not, I did not ask because I, I don't know everybody. Yeah. He, so he, Ross, his last name starts with a D. Yeah. 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 Two times I, I've talked. So that is a concern that there's mm -hmm. not one place for me to go for information. You've used social media, but by the time you get going through all those feeds and all those comments, it's kind of a strenuous process. I agree. So if there could be one place, like maybe a website on the township website or some place to go for precise information, no comments, mm -hmm. just information that I can look at because I did not know what any of the protocol was up here. You know, you know what's going on or anything. You know the air, you know, how the life safety gets over, how anything goes on. So I, you know, I'm reading and reading. And today, I get one person says the ferry's not going to be up until like Tuesday. Okay. Somebody else says, well, I just heard from somebody that they had to tear everything apart. And then the next thing you know, you guys are up and running. So I mean, it's very confusing. A lot of people going around. So a little more concise information. Um, I also called based on meetings to call to the governor's office, to call to the senator's office. I talked to Justin. To be honest with you, the governor's office pushes it all back down to the township level yep. and says, go to your township. So that's mm -hmm. why I'm here. You know, I want to let you know who I am. I'm mm -hmm. concerned. I'm interested in what's going on, but I need a little bit better spot to, to get my information from. And this, this is going to kind, kind of not be on the nicest part, but I, I went out to look what your job was, just so I understood what it involved. There is, there's a spot that says job description, but there isn't one. So I looked at your mission statement, and it says that you want to protect, preserve, promote, and improve the quality of life in our community. Mm -hmm. Well, right now it's not really the best. And as Jim stated, the ferry affair is, is not new. This, this has been going on for a longer point of time. So there does need, to, I don't know who does it, but we do need to get a lot more governmental agencies involved in this. It, it's, it's very important, I think, to everyone here. Mm -hmm. Okay, one last thing. There is an NF, NFPA that talks about fire department access roads. It's 18.2, it's a state mandate. Um, and it says approved fire department access roads shall be provided for every facility, building, or portion of a building once it's constructed. It can be consist of roadways, fire lanes, parking lot lanes, and a combination thereof. So that would go across not always public land. So I, I keep hearing it's, it's private land, it's private land, it's private land. There's, there's the, the fire department has access to more than just public land. They also mm -hmm. have private land. So I guess I'm a little bit confused sometimes when that should be maintained, that should be maintained to a better level because, I mean, you did do emergency services to get, get what we could. But still, it's not the everyday, not what we want on a daily basis. So those are basically my immediate concerns until I see you guys on Wednesday. <laughs> okay. Like I say, you know what? The ferry closure wasn't acceptable to us either. We under I understand that. I understand. I, mean, I just want to voice my concern and let mm -hmm. you know who I am. I, I understand okay. nobody's happy with well, it. Well, glad to meet you. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I know no one's happy with it. Right. Chris, you had a question? Uh, the, the NFPA 18.2, I'm, I'm just a little... Are you concerned about the f ferry landing on both sides and whether or not we have right, public to be able access to, to be able for to emergency get the vehicles? Over. I mean, can the fire trucks go over now? Can yeah. the fire engines go over now? That's not so, considered right, a light truck? Okay, because it, it says light trucks. I mean, I don't know what mm -hmm. a light truck is. That's why I said, you know, just some of the information needs mm -hmm. to be a little clearer. But they weren't able to go over. We don't have pontoons for the fire trucks, no. <laughs> but we do have fire trucks on the we island. We have two fire halls. You cannot get medical transportation off the island. And a half an hour response time, I'm dying to know what the hell that is. Tell them to come up. Can you, can you come, come up? up. I, I can't do nothing else. Okay. Okay. Any other public comments? Amy Strutes, um, 302 St. Clair Street, Harsons Island. Um, any of the electrical work 
that was done. Was that inspected? Truthfully, I'm not even sure. I think I, it needs to be looked into. It, it will be. I offered my company services mm -hmm. and I was told we can push wires back together. Obviously, we can also make them arc and spark. Yeah. Um, I called Anthony and I guess he doesn't work for you guys anymore. And it's Greg Furtaw. Yep. Um, does he have office hours? Uh, yeah, he's, he's in the office every day. Is he? Yep, and he's available every day. Okay. Uh, during, for an hour time frame or? Uh, no, it's, it's varies. It's, it's flexible. Okay. Uh, as needed. Is he from Marine City also? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I've met him. Um, those are some of the, those are the concerns that I'm looking at right now. Okay. Is, I don't, I mean, that should be an oversight that you can have. Mm-hmm, it is. Um, and... I know it's been really, I've, I've seen it, and it's really, that's water, and it's electricity, and it's a lot of metal boat, and I've seen what happens when it doesn't mix, mix up right. Thank you. Thanks. Any other public comments? Any more public comments? Once, twice, three times. Okay, moving right along. Thank you, everybody. Uh, consent agenda. I will entertain a motion. Board, I'll make a motion that we approve the consent agenda, consisting of the minutes from board meeting of December 2nd, 2019. Um, check reports. Uh, there were no public notice. There were no communications. And we have a couple of requests. Cindy Babish, uh, 2020 M Parks membership renewal for $565. Uh, Cindy Babish BSA training, the building module for $205, and Christy Hilton, an MMTA winter workshop for $149. Support. Okay, motion and support. Any uh, questions or uh, anything needs to be pulled out of the consent agenda? Hearing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Next, we move right into new business. Uh, first thing we have, uh, police in-car video police for police vehicles. Uh, $8,790. Uh, Chief, you want to come up and... Okay, what these are, these are to replace current in-car video cameras that we have right now. The current ones that are in these vehicles are between eight and nine years old, and these things are pretty much used 24-7. And what we've been doing is kind of cannibalizing other systems to keep these up and running because they've been way past end of life. Uh, but we're at the point right now, um, hopefully sometime in the near future, we're going to end up getting some uh, new patrol cars if Ford ever gets a line going. Yeah. Um, and we do not there's no way we can take these out of the old vehicles put them in the new because they're just not they're not functioning for us so this is something that we foreseen we knew was coming um uh, but it's just, at that point right now it's time to replace these units and if we get another you know eight nine years out of them we're doing pretty good chief these uh, uh units are similar in by the manufacturer of what you've previously used identical identical yep we replaced two of them last year this will update the rest of the fleet. So across the board will be pretty much new. And are these coming for our new vehicles or to refurbish existing? These are going to come for the new vehicles. That being said, board, I'll make a motion that we approve the in-car videos for the police department. Uh, the amount of $8,790 coming from line item 207-799.01 and 266-799. Support. Okay, we have motion and support. All in favor? Oh, any discussion? What's the savings on, Chief? Uh, well, these are Michigan State bid. Oh, okay. And these are through the state bid, so pretty much the lowest price we're going to get. Um, and this company that we've been using, uh, they've been pretty good with us, and uh, really we're getting them probably at least $1,000 cheaper each unit than, than you would with the competitors. And we've been using this company for probably about 14, 15 years now. 
So obviously there was no uh, turn in value on the old units. No. no. Well, the thing is, like anything else, the, the technology has changed. These systems here are pretty much at a 480p quality. The new ones coming up are a 1080p quality. Big difference when it comes in the evidentiary in that for court. Real big difference. Eight years old, looked like you sucked the life out of them. Huh? Yes, we did. <laughs> okay, any more discussion, questions on the campus? Hearing none, all in favor of uh, purchasing the in-car video cameras for $87.90, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Okay, next we, ha uh, we have a uh, uh, purchase of ammo for train. I think, Chief, you want to change this amount? Yeah, I was going to ask if, if I could change this with the board. Um, just today, I was talking with them from the state. This line item is our budget that we, we receive yearly from the state. What this is is called 302 funding, which is revenue from um, that we receive from the state for training. We receive so much per officer for full-time employee. Um, like any other department in the state. This money has to be spent strictly for training purposes. We can't buy anything that's not related to training. Um, so one of the things that we do use this for is training ammunition. Um, talking to the state earlier, I had more money in this fund than I thought. Uh, we had just under $2,900 in there. And this money, ha this is still money from 2017. We have two years in which to use it. And if I don't use this by December 31st, we lose it. So um, they actually updated what we had in there, and we actually had more than what I thought in there. So what I'd like to do is just use the remainder of that uh, towards training ammunition as well, because obviously it doesn't go bad. You so I don't want to lose the funds. You have a figure on that? Yeah, well. Uh, what, it's just under $2,900. What, um, I, I what I'm going to suggest we make a motion not to uh, exceed $2,900. Okay. Yeah, I just received this. I'm sorry about that. I just received this information before we came over tonight, so um, I didn't have time to throw it down on paper for you. But it's something I don't want to. I don't want to lose that money. Um, each year we get the monies, and we have two years in order to use that money. So right now we still have 18, 2018, and 2000 monies, but we have two years to use that money. So. And I try to keep this steered more towards our firearms qualification and that help us helps us out, especially when you know how it goes, the, the price of ammunition can go up and go down. So we have to make a motion to change the agenda? No. Or it's just the amount. Motion. Just the amount. Just the amount. All right. And so if you want to make a motion for not to exceed twenty nine hundred, that would be great. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve uh, ammo for train, uh, line 207960.03, not to exceed $2,900. Support. Okay, a motion to support. Any more discussion or questions? Hearing none. Okay, uh, so the motion is uh, purchase of uh, ammo, training ammo, not to exceed 2900 all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have a proposal for uh, professional service uh, from Project Control. It's for our SAW grant and asset management. Um, if you're uh, familiar, we received a, a SAW grant uh, that will basically uh, go through our, um, our whole sewer system our collection system and they they look at our uh, asset management of it and basically uh, uh, do, do, do the big inspection on it and everything and the grants actually for a million dollars with 10% of um, in-kind service which I think we already did our share probably on that part of it and uh, <coughs> it's a, a, a proposal for project control who's our township uh, engineers anyhow on uh, actually administrating and uh, performing the services for uh, the SAW grant. John and Anthony are up here. You want to come up here in case someone has uh, uh, any questions? Did I explain the grant correctly? Sure, you did. Yes. Hi, my name is Anthony Theodoro. Um, and so, yeah, we've been following um, the different rounds of the SAW grant. There's been seven rounds, general rounds, and then now they've done these mini rounds on the remaining communities, and this is this is basically the last one. So we've kind of 
saw the process unfold. Um, we completed uh, Ira Township's uh, grant. It was exactly the same amount of uh, money and uh, same t uh, framework. And um, obviously, it's been six years since we did the application, so we just want to uh, approve our, our fee schedule and, and everything. Our proposal is the same. Um, the, uh, the state is awarding the, it's called the NGAA letter, and that's what we heard over the phone from the uh, township's uh, SAW grant uh, coordinator. Her name is uh, uh, Karen Nichols. And so that, that will allow us to proceed next month um, with this, and it's a three-year time frame that we get to complete that, uh, all that work. Um, <clears throat> well, well, this will cover a lot of the, what OHM is doing for us now, won't it? Grant or could um, it, some partially some, partially. some, some, some of the of things it. that are grant eligible um, will overlap. Okay. Um, you have like a hundred and so so that section of uh, interceptor is about what two point two miles or something like that four miles two points. and yeah yeah four miles uh, well there's the force main part and then right so it's about half half and then uh, but the township itself has another I uh, just calculated today one hundred and forty five thousand linear feet that we have to do ourselves so. Right. So that covers, I mean, a good third of that is all the work we have to do to clean and televise all that uh, pipeline. Um, OHM's uh, approach uses uh, a type of robotics. Yeah, so they don't clean before they, they televise. So I have to make sure we're careful that we get everything that we can um, covered. That's one of my questions. How it was going to correlate with the OHM yeah. and, the, and the money that we were providing for them? Yeah. How, you got a figure on this line here about approximately what uh, the S, what the uh, saw grant application is going to be? That the application fee? Yeah. Um, it's it's small amount. I mean, it's something that. Um, I mean, I want to say. It was well, like I'm talking about the whole grant. Oh, the entire grant. Yeah. The entire grant is is 1.1 1. 1, uh, million dollars. Yeah. One point one point one oh two something like that, mm -hmm. and um, so ten percent is a matching. Um, but all expenditures of the township back to two thousand thirteen that were grant eligible can be applied. So there's a good deal of work that's done in the beginning to kind of uh, to do our first draw request. Mm -hmm. That's the first step we take. We we do a draw request. We get all our mm -hmm. bill, uh, you know, everything that we've been putting in a folder. And um, I, I submit that as draw request number one, and they, they give us our kind of like money that gets us started because um, it's a reimbursement program. So that way um, we kind of keep up with, uh, with those costs. So once this money is approved and everything, you start working to be uh, coordinating it with uh, OHM? No. Uh, no, they'll submit their work to, to us. We'll look at So there's a, an entity called NASCO that, that is a standard, mm -hmm. so everybody just follows that standard when it comes to sewer inspection work. Well, I was so, just looking at some overlapping. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, yeah, the the, the interceptor is shared with Ira, so even that. It's fifty fifty. They'll want us to just apply our share, um, first of all, mm -hmm. and um, uh, so this coordinator is is pretty good on on allowing those things. And we'll get a chance to review all this stuff as it comes forward, right? Absolutely. I'm okay. looking forward to it. I had a, I had coffee with the engineers of OHM at our, near our office yeah. there, and I talked to them. And uh, as soon as they, I think, uh, Red Zone from Philadelphia did the robotics uh, yes. thing. I know those people. And so uh, I'm sure as soon as the uh, they finish this small stretch and they send it to their, mm -hmm. their processors, uh, I'm hoping they'll share that information with us because those are just standard reports. Yeah, they'll, they'll so. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get you the report for sure. Yeah, we're pretty good at, at now at, uh, at recommending different repair types and, uh, and kind of helping with, in that regard. So uh, we did an entire um, reference manual for IRA, for IRA Township. It was, it was about that big. It was a huge book. And it described exactly the, the, the amount of repair, the cost for each, and then the total cost, which, which is what we're required to do in the grant. We're supposed to inform the capital improvement plan. Mm -hmm. And uh, they want to see that after three years. Well, it's two and a half years. They want to see that. Make sure all our rates are going to meet that. So. Sounds like you know your business. Thanks. <laughs> so, Anthony, th thanks for coming in today. Yeah. Um, I appreciate you and, and John being here. Um, it's my understanding that when I first got a hold of the board packet, I was looking at this as sort of an overlapping item um, compared to our sewer intercept and OHM. But, but I 
further come to realize, realize that th these are completely different issues. Yeah. Different there's just systems. a small percentage maybe of overlap. Yep. But these are two different projects that we're talking about, correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, so the interceptor is kind of the collector. And in a lot of communities, the collector would belong to like a different entity, like the county, for example. Mm -hmm. um, but in, in our case, it's, uh, I guess it's owned. It's got a weird uh, uh, type of ownership and maintenance uh, program. And so, uh, but like in, in uh, Lake, Lake Orion, for example, dumps into Oakland County's general interceptor because it's shared by multiple communities. That's how the DEQ or Eagle set it up. And so this was kind of, I think that was the intent. Um, however, uh, I think that they've determined as they've dis we discovered we discovered the problem, and we actually uh, cameraed about uh, a thousand feet of it, twelve hundred feet of it ourselves. Okay. And uh, and then you know we handed that information over, and the community started talking with the uh, with St. Clair County. Um, and so uh, the gases and everything, and the, the causes and uh, the the, re the reasons behind it, that's all kind of their report. They're focused on that one topic. Versus, we have to determine like we don't want any any high water levels entering the sewer system like on Anchor Bay Drive or, yep. you know, we have uh, 14 lift stations I believe that we have to that are our own lift stations. We have to uh, 3D scan them and uh, determine all the deficiencies and repairs required and put a price tag to that so that we know how to budget and plan moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, so the the interceptor on the other hand is going to be. A, They'll, they'll, they'll address those things. They'll, usually they'll bring back that along with kind of a forensics. I think it's more of a 50% forensics, 50% uh, these, we recommend these general approaches to do it. And then we can look at it and we can kind of make up our own, um, make up our own mind what's the, the most cost effective. Um, being that we're- As far as like recommendations? Recommendations. I mean, it's convenient that we're both the engineers in Ira and Clay, so- yeah. Those two communities, we we provide technical support. So when when they're looking at it, I'm sure they'll they'll contact us and uh, and we'll basically we we represent you, and uh, OHM sort of a third party engineer because yeah. it's a shared thing with the county. Okay. So it's kind of a that's how engineers do it, so that everybody has kind of got their own uh, client. So well, I, how, how do you feel about it, John? Well, to answer both your question. Yeah. Okay. The data they need at that point. That's right. Okay. So in, in in this, we we appreciate you 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 hang on to this project. What's going on six plus years now, right? That's a long time to hang on to a file and, yeah. and to follow up. <laughs> follow and, and, up. And, I, and I get all that. <laughs> it's dirty. Um, dusty. So you you're telling what what I've heard collectively is that we have some form of approval, mm -hmm. albeit it's just verbal at this point from the state. Uh, well, MFA, so it goes to two parts. So first there was the, uh, the Michigan Financial Authority that finances it, mm -hmm. and we took care of that back in September. So that's all approved. And, and so it, the, is that, that approved in email and writing and, both. and there's documentation? Yep. yep. And then, Do we have documentation here in our township? Yep. yep. Okay. You got from her. And then at that point it then goes back to DEQ once MFA says we funded this much and this is how big the round is. And then um, they issue their NGAA letters, which are the, the letter to the township that says, now we're going to give you the SAW grant contract. Um, other communities that are in the same round, uh, like Sinclair Township, have already done this situation where they said, well, we want our, our township uh, engineer to, to take on uh, all the necessary steps to make sure that we're enrolled in the, in the grant program. We don't have any any missing yeah. componentry or that they deny something because things have been determined. They didn't exactly know what they were going to make eligible or ineligible in the okay. beginning. So the rules were hazy and now they know they're denying these things. They're approving these things. We, we want to make sure that that entire 1.1 is given to the township and that, that we make them understand all those things that we do will be eligible. So PCE is looking to be our Somewhere. authority and acting on our behalf yeah, for that interface. SAW grant. That's right. And that's why you're here today, yep. is to seek that permission? Yeah, and we've had six, uh, it's been six years and all our fees and everything are, are now current. It's just inflation changes to the fee schedule that was in your packet, I believe. And so that's kind of what we're asking for approval, that we're going to be your administrators. So our packet is, is 
a little dated. So I don't know if your fees had since been updated. Did, did you get a look at our packet uh, today? It's a, it's a 2013 so. let. The letter, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and then uh, with the updated fees, with structure. updated fees, because the scope works the same. The fees are valid. So the yep. fees that are on here are January of nineteen. Yep, yep. So those are, and you'll be, we'll be honoring those fees for the next three years. So. Yeah, uh, that's what her email said, that uh, mm. their office has been authorized to issue fees those, fees. those letters. What, mm -hmm. what, what, the bottom of this page, right? Yeah. The Camarine. Uh, that we really don't know what we're going to pay. Well... Yeah, I mean, we know what the fees are. Right, and, and in here it, it draws up, you know, the estimated. Uh, You're capped you know, at ten percent. Yeah, the the um, estimated uh, things that's going to be on each category. So one million one hundred and ten thousand. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, one point one million. So we really don't care what the the breakdown. The yeah. Breakdown is per se. Yeah, that's right. Long, right. As long as it comes out to the total budget. But. Yep. Exactly. Now, once we get going on this, uh, how often will you report to us, like when you, for the draws, or, or how's that work? Yeah. So um, we want to try to do them. It, you know, we we're also doing the Baltimore's. They didn't want to do them as regularly. Uh, Ira did them in the beginning every month, and you can do them as much as every month. Mm -hmm. um, we found that more like every quarter is probably the the best way to do it okay. just because it's a bit of work and then you're not then you you kind of you don't get too far ahead but you're you're still keeping up uh with the draws they're really qu uh quick in uh turnaround usually uh it's a two-week turnaround from the time we do our draw request to the time they issue uh checks to the township so so are you performing the draw request we do that yeah and we get cc'd on the email that runs to the state all i do is or I'm you basically just take care of that i'm like thing. a secretary in that regard i just prepare all the documents yep. and then i have the uh, person we in charge. sign it it's probably john or or, or, Artie or Artie. Signs it. so yeah. we'll sign and send it that's right and then the funds get distributed to clay township straight to the township yep. and hence they're earmarked for pce uh no because they're a reimbursement so you would have already paid us and you're just getting that money back. So then it's yours. Do we have a draw schedule from you? Uh, it, it goes as we as we accomplish different, you know, we invoice monthly, and so the, we'll, we'll accumulate those two or three invoices, and then we'll request the funds to be reimbursed. What they do is, uh, uh, let's use $20,000. So if I submit a request for $20,000, then they'll send you back eighteen. So they take out the automatically the the ten percent. So that way they know it's uh, it's that uh, gap, you know, the uh, general accounting practices. So we have to follow that. Any other questions or the 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 second half of our our line, the asset management portion is is this letter tied in? Yeah, that's something separate. I, I put the, the wrong letters in, in the packet. So it's got nothing to do with right. what we're doing here. Yeah. So for approving this, we're improving the saw grant application? We're, we're approving project control to manage our saw grant. On behalf of the township. So we don't really know what what we're going to pay we're, we're, it's i mean it's, it's well, still everything we pay is going to be reimbursed for the grant okay. am i right anthony you're going to pay uh well ten hundred and ten thousand yeah and change over three years that's over three it. years over three and a lot of it we've already incurred yeah 
because because we can we can charge back to 2013, which we already have done a lot. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. We we located all the the covers, the manholes. We we've done a lot already. Mm -hmm. Remember, I say, oh, we do this, but this will be covered in the saw grant the past three, six years. It's now $110,000. It, it's, uh, it's right. But that's the max. And a lot of it can be like labor, too. Yeah. Right. That's what I mean. Mm -hmm. Right. A little difficult way to do so I'm, here. I think I'm, I'm good with this, and I'm certainly mm -hmm. fine with PCE. Um, I, I feel like very relieved if I had something from the state that says, you know, your saw grant is, is approved. You got an email, do right? Have, do we yes. have provisions in this? Can we base this on approval from the state? Is, yeah, is of, there, course, of course. Is there something in yeah. here that, that states that, or could, can we throw that in our motion? Put it in the motion. Mm hmm. Approve piece of project control engineering for uh, the minister our saw grant and uh, uh, provided as uh, approved upon, by yeah upon approval or upon uh, commencement right. yeah. I'm gonna let Dick shop this. I think it's a. Uh Funny way to do business. What would increase your comfort level? Yeah. Probably that um, we know exactly where we stand, but we can't. You know what I mean? We, we right. really it's can't. Right, it's like a mechanic. You, yeah. you don't know what you're getting into yeah. the engine mm -hmm. until you're there. Cost overruns. Right. <laughs> Cost overruns. But... Isn't Cindy the one that's going to be partially managing the uh, uh, income or the accounts receivable or accounts receivable and payable coming in? Oh, well, we the board this? will too. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like any other right. Any It'll other be receivable. Show up on bills payable, right? Yeah, it's like any other receivable. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, like I say, well, that's why I asked me. You know, we'll get quarterly reports from Anthony, mm -hmm. and. Uh, and I, th I think a, a major thing is is that you know you do have. Um, the interceptor work that's need that data needs to be yep. you know acquired and then you also have um, as you move into the grant there's questions that the state has we dealt with some in September but I know we'll we'll be dealing with more to to finalize the, the all the paperwork for the township but at this point it's it is just a formality in terms of paperwork and obviously it's a reimbursement program so if you don't expend any money then you don't you don't have any any liability mm -hmm. do you see what i mean so. so so as asset manager you're going to obviously manage the assets as is written that you're also going to manage the um payments as they come in and uh it's a asset management yeah. plan Pl plan so, those out yeah. yeah yeah so um so, so you're going to be doing the financials on it anyways that john's going to see and then we're going to see right well, as far as comparing the ones coming in and out yeah, well, the financial side of it, yes, but uh, but it's really more about the yeah. the different requirements that they ask. They ask for us yeah. to condition assess the assets, for example. Um, they'll they'll ask us to um, to determine the costs for rehab, and then also there's a rate study. So we'll we'll in the next three years they'll they'll, they'll require us to provide a, a report on the rates. Yeah, yeah, I think and so, a few part of it is an asset management plan. The state yeah. wants to make sure that. We have the we're charging the the right rates, and we have a plan to maintain and ensure that the system will 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 be maintained That's for right. years going forward. Viable, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Um, you know, they they want to look at your rate structure to see if you're charging enough or it's funded enough. Mm -hmm. uh, they want to look at your practices to see it is being maintained correctly mm -hmm. and those sort of things. And that's what Anthony is part of the study. Yeah, and yeah. We'll, we'll 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 actually do a rate study with our um, part of this with our um, auditors too. Yeah, yeah. And back in 2013, the board approved. The exact same proposal yeah. so really all we're doing is is updating the the fee schedule mm -hmm. um, associated with it 
and so we're, we're your grant administrator. The fees are t six years old, and so we're just updating those fees, and then the next step will be the, the grant will ask us, can you please uh, provide us the updated uh, breakdown of all the different components, like uh, uh, how much money will be spent on uh, TVing and cleaning, how much money will be spent on the rate study, and so all that will, our, our new rates that we, you've approved will apply to all, all that. We want to have all that in a, in a time frame because they don't give very much time. Uh, the MFA only gave us two, uh, was it two weeks? or Yeah, two weeks to reply back. So we, we want to make sure we're on top of things for you guys. So that's why we're asking for this to be approved. So the first, the first uh, thing, was, uh, the first uh, estimate was, or written, it's 2013? Mm -hmm. And then yeah. how often did you have to come back and renew this? You know, 2013 was the application time. Mm -hmm. It was December of 2013. Mm -hmm. And so uh, all the communities throughout the state put in their applications. Okay. And so uh, we got Clay Township on the list. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and now it was a lottery system. Mm -hmm. So uh, Clay was the, the last round of this lottery. So. Thanks for the explanation. There's only one person sitting on his board, I think, in 2013. <laughs> right, so. right. I think we need to be updated. Thank yep. you. That's right. Yep. yep. It's a good thing. Yeah, and obviously we're happy to come back in uh, I, when when we have some some more updates and, and let right. you guys know how things are going. So, Could we expound on that a little bit? Could we expect to see you maybe once a quarter, once yeah. half, half a year? That's fine. Yeah, quarter, quarterly. Maybe once a quarter, quarter, you could come in. We could put you at the top of the agenda or something. That's fine. Absolutely. Give us a quick update, rundown, what's yeah. going on. I live. Sounds I good. live here in Point de Chain, so <laughs> it's a big project for us. Oh yeah, it's. Oh, we've yeah. been looking forward to it. Yeah, we really need it. So Anyone want to make a motion or, or, or? I have one more thing. So all of the costs that we've incurred so far, you think are they won't they don't have a chance of being. What are the what's the likelihood of like how often do they deny reimbursement? Um, so, if they're grant eligible items, then then they get approved. There there's a precedence. Um, if it's sort of questionable, we don't know. It's something we'd like to try to do. I'll give you an example. Uh, we had a, a certain situation where we had a lot of uh, a certain nozzles in cleaning that were blowing up toilets, and so we said we'd like to approve. Uh, a special nozzle that prevents that. You know, it's an anti. It's called an anti-blast nozzle, and it's guaranteed to prevent. And so we had to work with them on how on how to do that. And what had to be done was it had to be purchased out of pocket from New Baltimore, and then rented back to themselves to re recoup the cost. And they worked with us on that solution. So that's how. So that I don't know why they they had to have it that way, but we when it's something questionable, we'll we'll try to get pre-approval before the money is expended. Yeah. Mark, for your other question too, Chrissy will be watching this probably the closest. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> Can't get anything by her. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, it has to be done. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Want me to make the motion or? How much do you think we've expended? What do you think, John? Six six years. Years. Six digits, right now. If I had a guess, I'd say fifty thousand. But I don't know all the criteria. That, that right. Changed. In fact, yeah. the approval now will probably give us the ability to to start working on getting this. Paperwork. Actually, some of this work that we we're doing on Anchor Bay Drive and stuff for the yeah, we will, yes. we'll, 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 we'll be covered on this. Mm -hmm. We're going to go over that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So mm -hmm. Anthony's really standing up there before us, asking us to, hey, can you let me help? Get reimbursement for some of the expenses right. that you've already shelled out. Absolutely. That's right. Yep. That's what I'm all <laughs> get get the fun part over with, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Let me see if I can craft up a motion board. Okay. So, board, I'll propose a motion that we hire project control engineering to provide our engineering services uh, to facilitate our saw grant and asset management plan 
as per the letter dated December 4th, 2013, and as per the fee schedule released on January 2019. Uh, you want to put in there that uh, upon approval of the... Uh, or upon or, receipt of plan award? Pa yeah, upon, upon, upon funding. Upon official uh, written authorization or yeah, yeah. official uh, notification of funding, and that comes from the state, right? Yep. yep from the state. So upon official notification of of approval of our saw grant from the state, support. You get that, uh, Jamie? You got that? <laughs> that was messy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so we have a motion and uh, support to. Uh, Name a project control engineering to administer our saw grant and asset management uh, grant and providing that uh, we re uh, approve uh, written uh, clarification the that it is funded from uh, the state. Everyone is understand the motion? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Any more discussion? Okay, roll call vote. Chrissy Hilton? Yes. Artie Bryson? Yes. Joanne Shirk. Yes. Mark Bouchard. Yes. Chris O'Regan. Yes. Hey, okay, motion passes. Thank you. Thanks, Anthony. And Thank you. John. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the clarification. Yeah. Anthony. Thanks for coming in. I'm glad it, it's been tough for me to <laughs> wing that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, next uh, fire department purchased four Mustang Pro Ice Cube uh, suits, line item 206764. Good evening. Uh, the fire department is requesting uh, permission from the board to purchase four Mustang Pro Ice Rescue suits. These will replace some of the aging equipment we have in our department. And two of the suits will go to the island station and two will be on the mainland. Okay. Well, didn't you say that it was... Re yeah, I checked the website today and it said that this particular model was discontinued we talked and that's because of the way the zipper the way it's the, the uh, I, I called the manufacturer I called Mustang and talked to them yeah they are discontinuing the suit but they still will warranty the suits uh, they still are producing the suits for other uh, companies that have purchased them and it's a uh, 10 year warranty Actually, it has a lifetime warranty on the suits for the zippers, the gloves, the fasteners, the snaps, uh, and the seams on the suits, and the inner liners. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Chief? Are we replacing that four that we already have? Yes, we're replacing some of the uh, suits that we do have in service. Uh, they are uh, around 20 years old. Okay. How often do we use a dive team anymore? Well, this is for ice rescue. Mm -hmm. So these can, these can hang up for? Anytime we go out on the airboat, if we have to go out on the ice to rescue ice uh, fishermen or if we have to go in, into the water, uh, any time of the year, we will put our, our firefighters in the suit. So they can handle whether you use them or not, as long as they go on the airboat? Right? Pardon? As long as they're on the airboat, they can handle whether you use them or not? We use them. They can I, handle? Yes. Okay. What, what do we do about sizing and one size fits all? This suit will fit a person at 6'3", 300 pounds. They're quite baggy, as you yes, can see they in are. the picture. <laughs> They're like old dry suits. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. used to scuba yeah. dive in. Yeah. yeah, they're not the typical... Uh, Skin tight wetsuit that I used to wear. No. Okay. <laughs> Any more questions for Chief? You, you've, you've done your research on on this particular model. This is this is the one you want to put put our guys in. Yes, Mustang. You're, you're, you have all the confidence in the world in this suit, this yeah. manufacturer, this style. The, we do. We presently have Mustang suits right now. Okay. They've been in a business for many many years. That being said, I'll make a motion to purchase the, for the fire department to purchase four Mustang Pro Ice Rescue Suits from line item two, uh, 206-764 for the total of 
$689.23, is that correct? Yep. Yep. Support. Okay, motion support. Any more discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of uh, purchasing the four Mustang Pro rescue suits. Signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we have a resolution uh, 2019-30 before us, St. Clair County Road, right away access. Uh, this is a yearly thing that uh, um, uh, we have to pass so, uh, so we can work in the county road right away. Um, and uh, we uh, give them a copy of our insurance, this, that, and uh, we pass this resolution so we can get, John can get in there and dig holes if he needs to <laughs> along the road. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2019-30 for the St. Clair County Road Commission right-of-way access. Support. Motion and support. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Uh, let's see, Joanne Shirky. Yes. Mark Richard. Yes. Chris O'Regan. Yes. Chrissy Hilton. Yes. Artie Bryson, yes. Motion passes. All right, that's all that we have. Um, board member comments. Who wants to go first? Want to start down there, Mark? Yeah, sure. Uh, next planning commission is January 22nd. We'll be discussing the uh, Blue Horseshoe uh, uh, project uh, once more. <laughs> And um, I'd like to wish everyone a happy holidays, happy new year. It's a good meeting tonight, thank you. Yep. Good input. Joanne? My comment is um, I'm glad to be able to get over here because I live on Hudson's Island, as you all know. And, I hope uh, you can get back. And I, yeah, that's what I'm hoping <laughs> to do. And we have a um, Zoning Board of Appeals meeting on this coming Wednesday, Wednesday evening. So I'll have to come back and forth twice on Wednesday. And uh, I'm glad of it. So we're making some progress. And I, too, wish everybody a happy holiday, happy, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year. Chris? Yeah, I just, I, I, I empathize with, with the Islanders and, and being stuck over there. I'm, I'm appreciative that we have a, a, a solution, albeit if it's temporary or permanent, I'm an aware. Um, I'm looking forward to finding out how we as a township board can develop um, more oversight and, and specifically what my roles and responsibilities are to help uh, the island residents. What, what, a, what a terrible inconvenience that, that must be. And, and although they're, they're, they're you know, certainly a hardy bunch and used to Dealing with the unexpected, I, I, I can't imagine personally not, not having fuel in my vehicle or, or worried about propane or, or not being able to run to Kroger as I do just about every day. You know, that's terrible. And, and, I, and I, feel, I feel bad for them. And I'm glad the ferry's up and running. And I'm looking forward to ways to, to improve that service or, or at least finding out what, what my role is to help facilitate mm -hmm. that. I also wanted to thank um, um, Officer Sergeant Farhard, or Farhard, our resource officer Farhardo, and uh, Sergeant Stockwell for for the Lieutenant. Alice Lieutenant Stockwell. I'm I'm sorry, there was a promotion. Um, <laughs> the Alice training was was spectacular, and and Chief, they they were top notch. And I don't know that you could have handpicked better representation for the department and and to administer some very difficult and sobering training. Um, it, it's, it raises the hair on the back of your neck. Um, it's significant, it's, it's memorable, it's lasting, and, and I look forward to working more with your department. Um, I think it's a great thing that we're doing, and, and I appreciate the, the attendance um, that we had from our first responders, mm -hmm. from your staff, from Chief Rose's staff, um, oh, yeah, from the Planning Commission, um, from, from, from our board. Um, it's just spectacular, and, and I'm, and I'm encouraged that as a community um, you're, you're helping lead us in, in being proactive in that. And I, I'd like to point out to our guys are, are we do training all over the county for this, right? Yes. I mean, yeah, they're, they're we're, we're nationally the guys, certified. We're so. the guys training the whole county on this. And training the trainees? Quite, our guys were quite instrumental in, um, throughout the county and in the new ASH program as well. Um, so, I mean, 
it's something that you know what's nice in the county right now is you've got cooperative efforts throughout the entire county so it really makes a big difference and you know between all the chiefs and, and right down to the guys that are putting on the program everybody is just is really worked together well on this to be on the same page I mean that's where it all comes down to is let's face it God forbid we do have an incident like this that everybody that's coming is being trained the same way and, and that's really what the, the goal we're trying to achieve here and chief you're gonna make a, a schedule another meeting yes. because I was unable to attend yes. <laughs> we are gonna have another yeah. one um, uh, because of the, some of the people yeah we're gonna make it a little bit later in the day as well yeah. um, be a little bit easier that way we have pretty good class sizes on these last ones so I know this one won't be as large so it might be a uh, little bit easier to do towards the evening time and I just want to quickly clarify we we co-train with other members it's not that we're the ones that co we've actually co-trained with other members of other agencies and that's that's the whole purpose get everybody on the same page so it's not just us out there I mean Captain King from the Sheriff's Department does an outstanding job we co-train with everybody and that's that's the point to get everybody together and on the same page so the nice thing is they have no problem coming in and working with us and helping us out the same thing goes with us our guys have no problem going out and working with them so like I say it's a collaborative effort and it's worked out very well for us I heard in one of the training sessions that someone took down and started <laughs> Lieutenant Stockwell it, it, it's amazing <laughs> I have the video the heroes that that will, will step up and in the the reactions to some I mean it was uh, it was not an enjoyable presentation I, I did not by any means enjoy myself but the amount of knowledge that I gained from the training is incredible it's sobering and i just so what I, if and i and i really appreciate the delivery I, I think you guys did an outstanding job thank you yep so what if we have an active it, shooter it's unfortunate that these are the, the things that we have to put on the top of our list for training but that's yeah, we do. that is that's, 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 cool. that's where we live yes and you know what and the thing that bothers me more and more is that it seems like the more we're hearing this, Every the more we're becoming to it. And that's a shame. That is a shame. So true. That's all I have. Okay. Chrissy? I have a couple things. Um, we had a question at the last meeting about a tax bill balance. Uh, that charge was actually a special assessment from the St. Clair County Drain Commission. So if you have a question or you don't understand something on your tax bill, I would really encourage you to call the Treasury Department or stop by the office so that we can resolve that concern for you. Um, if you look at the back of your tax bill, we have included additional information that's important. Um, there were two new drain assessments that St. Clair County Drain Commission um, assessed this year. And the drains that you would see on your tax bill would be called Dana MC, Harrow, Harsons, Macomb, Marine City, and Swale. Um, so that's just a clarification on that question from the last meeting. Um, the Goodfellow total that was collected in the township office for uh, the change roundup and the, the boot and the donations and all of that came to $1,238.22. So right. I think we're all super proud of that. Yeah, yep. big time. And what time frame was that? Uh, I want to say it was maybe we started around the beginning of November, so maybe a month, a little over a month. Yeah, we're cool. yeah. We're gonna keep people. that going year round. Awesome. Yeah. So. Um, I personally would like to see an annual inspection performed on the ferry docks by the state. I think that they should be inspecting just like any other transportation structure. Um, I understand the frustration of the residents. I can say that everyone in the office is frustrated when that happens um, and I think that you know the owner should be accountable and I think the township should be provided with an inspection so that we can keep on top of that and then I also want to address a situation that occurred last week within the township office which I think has to do with our Alice training that we all went through that might have been a part of it um, I think it was told out of context uh, we had when it was relayed out to the public uh, we had a very upset resident that came into the office that was frustrated about the ferry situation last week. Uh, the resident confronted a township official and the ensuing conversation began to escalate to the point that the Treasury Department employees became concerned for not only the official but the office as a whole and a request was made to police dispatch for officer presence. 
Um, there was no name given, but simply that presence was needed. So in this day and age, and with our ALIS training that we've recently gone through, we can no longer sit back and watch events unfold, dismissing flag or flags or warnings, and hoping that situations de-escalate on their own. Uh, each resident that visits the township office is treated with respect and in a professional manner, and our employees deser deserve the same respect and professionalism in turn. Township employees are here to assist residents and to the best of our abilities in a courteous, professional, and safe environment. So I just wanted everyone to know that. Thank you. Very good. Thank I think you. we all concur. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas? I do. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. She makes awesome Christmas cookies. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> um, I'd like to uh, finish up too. Uh, of course, wish everyone a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. <clears throat> and I, I too would like to see something done with the, the docks and the ramps as far as some type of inspection and oversight. I know we, we all our bridges get inspected every year, or, th or I think it's two years. Every two years, a bridge is, is inspected in the county. And so that would, I would think whoever's doing that, it would would have the same knowledge. In fact, I think it would be a little easier to inspect a, a, a ferry dock, a ramp. Um, right now, there's really no legislation to do that, and that's one of the things I want to talk about Wednesday, maybe, uh, what, um, what, what, you know, maybe we can get the ball rolling. I don't know if that could be done at a county level or if it has to be done at a state level. Um, I was going to actually ask our uh, attorney for, uh, um, uh, you know, what, what they thought, which, which way it would go. I don't think we can do it at the township level. I'll, I'll find that out, too. Um, quite honestly, I know everyone gets sick of me saying it, but the township stops at the seawall. And we don't have any juice out past the seawall over the water, and that's where the ramps are. But I will find that out too. Um, State police Lowers tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, Wednesday. Wednesday. So, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the meeting Wednesday. I, I, I hope there's a lot of information provided and a lot of questions get answered. I'm hopeful. Um, I know there a lot of people do have questions, and you know th this wasn't really easy to pull off. Like I say, uh, I, I tried kind of put this together as like two days after the rate increase went into effect. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's a challenge to get all these different entities to meet at one time, two and a half hours away from them. And uh, so uh, we, we were able to, to pull, pull that together on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday. And I'm, I'm hopeful that it's beneficial. And, uh, um, Hopefully, uh, some and a lot of the questions will get answered, and it gives us a choice, to, a chance to voice our opinions on what needs to be changed going forward. So I'm very hopeful with that, um, and uh, you know, I, I, I just wish the governor would pay a little more attention to our our township with uh, you know the flood issues, the ferry issues, the the. the issues of, uh, you know, the, the, the no-wake issues that we need. It's uh, really frustrating to, you know, I feel like I'm just lobbying all these issues that we need help with, and, it, you know, it's, it's going to a black hole. Um, but we will continue to work on that. And, uh, yes, it's the Islanders, yeah, there's a lot of frustration, and I totally understand that. I was frustrated, uh, we all were, and um, um, I, I felt we did everything that we could in our power. Uh, there's only so much juice that the township has. A lot, some people think the township can do anything. Um, I mean, one time I, I had someone complain to me because the people across the canal was play, left their TV on at night uh, and, and the light was coming across the canal in their bedroom and keeping them up. And Artie, you need to turn, tell them to turn their TV off. 
I am so thankful that I don't have that much power to go into someone's house and tell them when they can watch TV. I tell them, shut the drapes. Well, I don't like to shut the drapes. I like sleeping with open. Well, then deal with the TV going or get a universal remote where you can turn it off or something from across the canal. I, you know, uh, it's, it's amazing that, that, you know, but- What they call you for. Okay. Yeah, but well, the, the powers that we have are very specific and it's set out in state statute. I mean, they're very clear, defined and clear cut. And um, I mean, we can only spend money on certain things. Uh, like, you know, everyone loves Little League, but Township can't go spend, give money to Little League, you know, that type of a thing. It's uh, very specific things that we can spend money on and, uh, and, and do. So, um, like I say, I, I, you know, they, I was getting questions. Well, why don't the township go in there and finish that dock? Township can't. And I don't think someone on uh, lives back on Stone Road would like to see their top, their taxpayers' dollars being paid for fixing the, the ferry. You know, rightly so. Um, there's only so, like I say, we're, we're limited on what we can do. But anything that we can do, we tried. Uh, you know, I, I was on the phone with state officials and, and Army Corps of Engineers and looking at different things. You know, uh, during an emergency, we could have a, a floating bridge put across the river. Army Corps of Eng Engineers has one. It's in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Two days I could have it here. But it's gotta be an emergency and Problem is it blocks off the channel too, so there's no boat traffic. But if that happened, they would say, okay, there's traffic going one way and that's off the island, you're not getting back on. It'd be for evacuation. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I've, I've gone through so many scenarios of different things. Uh, the one I like best is my idea is to put a zip line up across the river. <laughs> It'd be more fun. Be more yeah, fun. We, we got the, we got the tower over it by the, the DNR ramp for the camera on there. There's one tower that we have. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Let's wrap it up. Yeah. yeah. So, hey, uh, on that, you know, it's the Christmas season. Uh, keep an eye on your neighbors and friends. It's a stressful season anyhow. And don't be afraid to tell people all that you're thinking of them. Give your friends and family a hug and... Have Merry Christmas. Motion to adjourn. A grand. Thank you much for coming. Merry Christmas, everyone. Yeah, yeah. You want you want me to hug you? I'll give you a hug. <laughs>